When we think about the civil rights movement, one of the first people we think of is Rosa Parks. In 1955, Rosa Parks challenged segregation laws in the southern United States when she refused to give up her seat on a city bus to a white man. Her arrest was the beginning of the movement to end segregation. The African American community of Montgomery, Alabama boycotted the buses for a whole year. They walked to work, to school, to church, and home again, and refused to ride the buses until there was no longer any discrimination. But nearly a hundred years before Rosa Parks, a woman did something similar and equally courageous to fight against segregation and discrimination. The woman was Elizabeth Jennings. The place was New York City. The year was 1854. In New York City in 1854, slavery had been illegal for 27 years. There were no laws that said that buses, trains, and businesses had to segregate. But there was also no laws that said they couldn't. So those companies who wanted to practice segregation and wanted to discriminate against African Americans did exactly that. There were two kinds of public transportation horse-drawn buses, or omnibuses, that ran on the roads, and horse-drawn rail cars that ran on flat rails on the roads, like trams. One of the companies was called the Third Avenue Railroad. If you were African American and wanted to ride in one of their rail cars, you had to wait until a rail car arrived that showed a sign saying that black people could ride in that car. If there was no sign, only white people could ride in that car. Elizabeth Jennings was 24 years old in 1854. She lived downtown on Church Street. She was a school teacher and she also played the organ in her church. Most African Americans boycotted public transport in New York so they would not have to face being thrown off buses and rail cars. But on the afternoon of Sunday, July 16, 1854, Elizabeth Jennings was running a little late so she decided to take a rail car rather than walk to church. She was with a friend, Sarah Adams, and both of them got into the first rail car that arrived at the corner of Pearl and Chatham Streets. It was a rail car that did not have a sign on it, and there were about eight or nine white people already in that rail car. The conductor asked her to get off, but she refused and said that she needed to get to church. Elizabeth Jennings and her friend insisted that they would not leave the rail car. The conductor then told her that she could get on, but that if any of the white passengers objected, he would put her out. In response, here are Elizabeth Jennings' own words explaining what happened next. I answered again and told him I was a respectable person, born and raised in New York, did not know where he was born, that I had never been insulted before while going to church, and that he was a good-for-nothing, impudent fellow for insulting decent persons while on their way to church. Feeling insulted, the conductor and the driver first pulled off Sarah Adams, and then tried to pull Elizabeth Jennings off the rail car, but she resisted, first by holding onto a window, and then by holding on to the conductor's coat. They wrestled her to the floor while her friend shouted in distress. Eventually, they succeeded in pushing her off the rail car. Elizabeth Jennings went home and wrote down what happened in a letter, which was read at a rally at her church the following day. Her father was a civil rights activist who worked with Frederick Douglass and other people to abolish get rid of slavery throughout the United States. He would not let the issue rest. Elizabeth Jennings' letter was published in two newspapers, and they decided to take the Third Avenue Railroad to court. Their lawyer was Chester Arthur, who many years later would become the 21st President of the United States. The judge said it was wrong for the real company to discriminate against people and that African Americans had the right to travel in any rail car. The company had to pay Elizabeth Jennings 
$225 because of the way they had treated her. Today, it would be worth $6,250. Even though Elizabeth Jennings won her case, there was still discrimination against African Americans on buses and rail cars. The fact that Elizabeth Jennings had won her case inspired other people to fight back and take their cases to court. Nearly 20 years later, in 1873, the New York Civil Rights Act was passed, which ensured that African Americans had the legal right to travel on any bus or rail car they chose. Elizabeth Jennings has played an important part in ending segregation in New York City public transportation. In 2007, a group of third and fourth graders from PS361 on the Lower East Side of Manhattan petitioned the city to erect this sign honoring Elizabeth Jennings. The gospel train are coming, I hear I just the hand. I hear the car wheels rumbling and rolling through the land. Then get on board, a little children, get on board, a little children, get on board, a little children, there is room for many or more. I hear the train are coming. She's come around the curve She's lost and whole has thin and break It's raining every nerve And get on board A little children, get on board A little children, get on board A little children, there is room for many a more if there is cheap and no can go, the rich and poor are there. No second class of is dream. No difference in the fair. Then get on board. A little children, get on board. A little children, get on board. A little children, there's room.